This is GNOME 45 and it's the perfect Linux desktop environment for me. Or at least it would be if there weren't some caveats. See, GNOME is all about simplicity and the coherent design. While its default look and navigation differ quite a lot from other desktop environments with a more traditional taskbar, it's quite useful once you get to dive into it. You get a big application menu, which is ideal for distributing apps across several workspaces, a nice overview of all of your open apps, as well as an easy and in my opinion very effective presentation of settings, especially newer ones. But at the same time, this simplicity and coherent approach also seems to be GNOME's biggest weakness. Many settings are still scattered across different applications, which are not even installed by default on most distributions. And they also don't get updated to the much newer theme Libet Vita, unless you manually install one. The same can also be said about customization. Streamlining an experience automatically leads to less customization and it becomes even more challenging for developers if we also consider that their extensions break after a major release. Perfection is the thing that GNOME keeps holding back and it's something that I want to discuss today. As some of you have already noticed, I've been using GNOME 45 for the last couple of weeks. Initially this was just due to my extensive testing for my latency video, but then I kept it and tried out some custom patches, which then led me to track some open issues and merge requests on their GitLab. First and foremost, Variable refresh rate support is a big blocker for other anticipated features which especially gamers would like to see. GNOME has picked up development again and it has even become part of the Sovereign Tech Fund. But it's a rough road. Since the original developer of VRR on GNOME has continued development around 3 weeks ago, progress is moving… slowly. While there were a couple of important updates that got merged, one of the main blockers was UI which at the time of making this video still doesn't have a final decision. The initial merge request, similar like on KDE Plasma, just features a toggle, which lets you enable or disable VRR. Works, but other operating systems like macOS also advertise what the compatible range is. This led to a bunch of different mockups, which are already suitable for an initial implementation, but that's not how GNOME operates. And so it gets iterated a bunch of times. Now that is not something that I would usually talk about, since it is a good approach to work this stuff out and find the proper solution. But here's the thing, variable refresh rate should be implemented in GNOME 46 under an experimental flag, and yet none of the checkboxes have been completed yet. GNOME 46 has a feature freeze on February 10th, which is just a couple of days from now. So there is a chance that VRR doesn't get implemented in GNOME 46 because there is no decision on a UI choice, which mostly just includes some text which doesn't even have an impact on the actual user experience itself. Ok, we don't know if there is some communication happening in the background and I don't know yet if it will be decided at the time that this video releases. The fact is that this even has gotten so close to the deadline is scary nonetheless. Some settings take ages to implement, while other desktop environments manage to do this very quickly. What it essentially boils down to is how beneficial is a feature for everyone. The Linux community can be quite vocal when it comes to missing features, while not all that many are even affected by this. Variable refresh rate and triple buffering are only beneficial for a subset of people. Heck, back on Windows I even used to deactivate FreeSync altogether. But that being said, there are a couple of things that shouldn't be neglected. Proper scaling in Wayland should be a top priority. And yet it isn't implemented because of some issues with xWayland, a backwards compatibility tool. Yes, there were some justifications about the slight performance hit that comes with the current implementation. But it's better to have something that works most of the time rather than something that just doesn't work at all on some displays. KD Plasma is almost the exact opposite of that. New features get decided upon and merged quickly, which often leads to some patching afterwards, but they do provide a good and functioning experience. I mean even fractional scaling is praised on Plasma, while its implementation still has the same problems as GNOME would have. I get 
what GNOME is trying to do. And I respect that they want to find proper implementations and even fix problems that occur from hardware limitations, even on other operating systems. But what I don't like is circling around an issue that could be solved already, especially for stuff that's behind an experimental flag anyway. Plans and deadlines should be updated, even if features are not ready in time. And I believe that the attitude that some GNOME haters bring to the table could be reduced a lot by simply communicating more. If I see an issue that has no response for a couple of days, then we don't know what's going on. Weekly blog posts that keep mentioning VRR on top of having an open issue with a set deadline for GNOME 46 gets people's hopes up, just to be disappointed again. And I don't want that for GNOME. When I say that I believe that GNOME is the most solidified and easiest desktop environment to use, then I truly mean it. Not just from an overall preference standpoint, but by what it offers out of the box. And it's a real shame that anticipated features take so long to implement. Not everything needs to be perfect. It just needs to be good enough to properly work. A great example of this is their file manager. They have a working implementation that is good to understand but they keep improving it. Like again, I really like the GNOME project, but I needed to get this out real quick before I move back to KDE Plasma. GNOME accounts with their calendar integration, the inbuilt weather widget in the top bar, their screenshot tool, network shares implementation, and especially the overview is just so heckin' easy to set up. It's just crazy. On Plasma, a lot of stuff is a lot more work to set up, and in the end, I can't get it to work just like I want it to. Plasma 6 comes with a lot of improvements to the overview, for example, but I still can't access all my apps the way I want to. This is not an accident, of course, as their implementation also has its limits, but it's something that I wish was possible. If GNOME manages to implement variable refresh rate support and especially tearing, then I will use it, since funny enough, they just nailed it for me personally. The more I customize KDE Plasma, the more it becomes like GNOME, but it's always going to be a lesser experience for me on the desktop, since it's just not GNOME. Maybe I find a new workflow that puts Plasma over the edge for me, but GNOME is basically the thing that I prefer. And I hope that we can finally close this chapter soon enough. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and also subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. I would really like to hear your opinions on this matter. Do you think GNOME is making the right calls delaying these features or should they just go ahead and implement them? Please let us know. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.